Rounds of severe weather in the southeastern U.S. have grabbed national weather headlines over the last couple of weeks. Now, this is the start of that region's severe weather season, but there is reason to believe that this season could be a little bit more active than normal. I'll show you why in this week's Heather's Weather Wise. Two major severe weather outbreaks played out over the southeastern U.S. over the last two weeks, and in both cases, the Storm Prediction Center issued a high risk for tornado producing supercells. Now that high risk is considered level five on a five level risk scale. Only 23 of those days have played out in the last decade. Both of those big weather days were forecast several days ahead of time, showing just how far short range forecasting for severe weather has come. When it comes to medium and long range forecasting, things are a little bit fuzzier. We obviously can't tell you exactly where these nasty storms are going to set up two to three weeks from now, but we can look at the ingredients and what may be supplying them over the next few weeks. Severe storms need moisture, lift, instability, and shear. The moisture is pretty self-explanatory. Lift and instability are needed to get air rising to create those giant thunderstorm clouds. That comes from things like fronts. Shear is the turning of winds with height. That's what gets those storms spinning and primed to produce tornadoes. Those are the ingredients. Here's where they come from. Now the moisture may seem like the most obvious. That comes up out of the Gulf of Mexico when southerly winds drag it northward. Lift and instability come from these waves of cool air that occasionally move into the plains. And along that, you get a cold front. The shear is a little bit of an X factor. We're still not totally clear where that comes from or exactly how much you need to get these tornadic storms going. Now, when it comes to a La Nina season, one of these ingredients can be upped a little bit compared to a neutral or an El Nino season. That's because a relatively strong La Nina pattern can push the southern branch of the jet stream farther up to the north. That allows more waves of warm, moist air to move northward out of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, that would not only potentially increase the severe weather threat for parts of the southeast, also known as Dixie Alley, that could spread the severe threat farther north this year, too. I want to make it clear that this La Nina setup and the potential increase in warm, humid air masses over the eastern U.S. doesn't guarantee more severe weather, but it does suggest that it could happen. Remember, severe storms take a very precise set of conditions set up at just the right time in order to come together. So storms of this magnitude really are an accident of nature, and fortunately for us here in western New York, we don't have to deal with it all that often. Still, it's always good to be prepared. Know your safe place and know ways to get a warning. That could include your smartphone or a NOAA weather radio. That's it for this week's Heather's Weather Wise. I'll see you next week with a new topic, but until then, remember it's good to be a geek.